My name is Professor David Albert Jones and I'm one of three people who were uh, asked to give expert advice and content oversight for the uh, Jersey Citizens Jury on assisted dying. I think we tried our best to, to have a balance of speakers for and against. Uh, all of the content is on the, the website or in the report and people can judge for themselves whether, whether what the jury was exposed to was was balanced, but that was certainly uh, our intention. What I was not aware of at the time, but is very clear from the report, is that the jury had actually been selected so that there was a very strong bias in favour of uh, those in favour of euthanasia or assisted suicide. Uh, in fact, 19 of the 23 jurors were either definitely or uh, probably in favour of a change in the law. And most members of the jury, 14 out of 23, already had very definite views about what they thought about the subject. So even though they were exposed to this, this balance of, of views, uh, there was already a very strong uh, determination of, of what the, the final numbers might be. What I think is most useful about the report, therefore, is not the actual numbers who were in favour or the particular numbers for, for each vote, What's important is to look at the reasons that people gave, because that's the benefit of this sort of process, a deliberative process, is to look at what are people's concerns, what are their hopes, what are their fears, both for those who are in favour and for those who are against. The concern of those who were uh, in favour of a change in the law was very much the situation of people who might lose capacity, people uh, in a coma or people with dementia. And that's why when they came to think about what sort of law they wanted, they were very clear that they wanted not just assisted suicide, but they wanted euthanasia, where a doctor would do it. And they wanted it not just for the terminally ill, but for people who were chronically ill or who were disabled. Um, and they wanted it not just to be done for people who could consent at the time, but for people who could consent in advance. Because they were worried about these, this category of people uh, who, uh, who had, as I say, who had dementia form of assisted dying that they were in favour of is very much the form of euthanasia that you have in the Netherlands and in Belgium or in Canada more recently uh, and quite different from the form of physician assisted suicide for the terminally ill that you have in Oregon because that simply wouldn't address the concern they had uh, for people uh, who were severely ill and who couldn't take the medicine themselves or who wouldn't even understand anymore. It's sometimes said that um, if you accept physician-assisted suicide for the terminally ill, for adults, then this will lead to a slippery slope. If you accept physician-assisted suicide, why not a nurse? If you accept it for adults, why not for mentally competent uh, minors? Uh, if you accept assisted suicide, why not also euthanasia? If you accept it for people who can consent now, why not for people who can consent in the future. And what we've seen in the, in the citizens' jury is that this logic, this inner logic of, of euthanasia is accepted by the jury and in each case they vote for the most permissive, uh, some would say the most extreme uh, um, form of, of euthanasia or assisted suicide. Uh, and they do so because this is where, this is where the logic of euthanasia um, points. So I think if we're going to judge um, the outcome of this, this jury, if we're going to look at what this jury tells us, it's that there isn't a half measure here. What there is, is um, uh, a group of people who are concerned and they think that the answer for their concerns is to, is to uh, legalise uh, euthanasia for people who are disabled, which can be authorised in advance, even for people who are not competent at the time. That's the form of uh, uh, euthanasia that you have in, in Belgium and in Netherlands and in Canada and that's the kind of euthanasia which people are most concerned about who are concerned about abuses because if a doctor does it as opposed to you doing it yourself and if you're not consenting at the time but you've just risen it in advance then it is somebody else who's making that final decision and if people are making that decision um, when you have said then there will be times when they will say, well, it's not what you did say, but what you might have said, or what you would have wanted. And what we see, what we see time and again, 
in the Low Countries is that many people have their lives ended who have not asked for it. And this happens because the form of uh, assisted dying which they want is euthanasia. So the question now before the State Assembly and the question for uh, people of, of Jersey to consider is what do they think of this proposal? What do they think of the proposal to have euthanasia for people not just who are terminally ill but who are chronically ill and not just uh, who can consent at the time but could consent in advance? Because this is the proposal which has come out of the uh, citizens' jury process and uh, it gives a stark choice for, for, for people. What the State's Assembly need to, to, to think about is would this change be a change for the better or a change for the worse? Would it improve the, the treatment of the seriously ill, the treatment of people with dementia, or would it be uh, a threat, a threat to, to public safety?